The Lord be with you. I welcome you to this worship service this morning in the name of our risen Lord Jesus Christ. We're grateful that God has called and gathered you together here today to hear his holy word. Special welcome to any guests or visitors with us. We're delighted you've joined us. Hope you all can return and worship with us again. If you haven't done so yet, we'd ask you to grab those uh, welcome pads at the inside end of each row if you'd fill those out and uh, pass them back and forth. That's really helpful uh, for us and maybe for you as well. The broadcast of this service over KDUZ is uh, sponsored again today by an anonymous donor in thanks for Faith Lutheran's church staff. And we say right back at you. Uh, we appreciate uh, all the members of the congregation. So especially appreciate this gift to our outreach into the area. June 11th is the uh, sole remaining Sunday looking for radio sponsor until uh, way out in September. So if uh, you've been thinking about doing that, you might check out that date coming up here very shortly. Today is the last Sunday of the Easter season. It's also the last day of Sunday school for this school year. So our uh, special thanks to all of our teachers and musicians and substitutes, aides, sprouts leaders, confirmation guides. There's a whole host of people that uh, make this vital ministry possible. And we're grateful to all of them for their uh, dedication to the educational ministry of the church. This is also our annual graduate recognition Sunday. Uh, between the services day, there will be a brunch served for our graduates and their families, and then they will receive a blessing during the foundation service later this morning. Uh, you can see their names listed in the bulletin. Uh, I ask you to pray for them and their families at this uh, really special and important time in their lives. This afternoon, from around 2 to 4, uh, we're going to have a work day over at the Ansgar House. Uh, you can see some of the needed tasks that are listed in the bulletin. We're going to have a couple of our summer ministry interns moving in there soon, so we want to have it spruced up and ready to go. Uh, so please come and lend a hand. It uh, should be great weather this afternoon. And then as the high school mission trip uh, draws nearer, uh, Fly Youth are hosting a, a simple fundraiser. Uh, call on Kristen Durst to tell you more about that. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, it's hard to believe that our mission trip is just under two months away. I just looked it up. We're 47 days out and two months from now we'll be back for over a week. So. For you, you might be like, wow, it's that time of year again. For me, I've been thinking about it since the second we got back from Denver last summer. Um, we have been so blessed by your generous support on our years of going on mission trips. We've been going on these mission trips for decades. If you were to ask all of our adult leaders to add up how many mission trips they've been on, it's well over 100. Um, but your generosity is what has allowed us to go on these trips. And we are so, so thankful. Today, and has been going on for the last couple weeks, I'm going to talk to you about our envelope fundraiser. And this fundraiser is going to set off our travel costs for vans and gas and leader costs uh, for our trips since we don't charge our leaders. Um, how this fundraiser works is you take one of the envelopes that's numbered 1 through 100 with the number on it. You put that amount in there or more. And then the, as the envelopes continue to disappear, there's a message that gets revealed on the board. There are two boards. There's one right outside here, the sanctuary doors, and there's one over by door one or by the famous donut table. <laughs> Thank you so much for your support for our mission trip this summer to West Virginia, and we can't wait to share more with you as we get closer and as we return. So thank you so much. Thank you, Kristen. <clears throat> I would echo her thanks for the, the generous and steady support of the congregation for these high school mission trips. They've been really significant through the years, so we appreciate that very much. This Thursday at noon is the last senior's potluck for this school year, so you can uh, bring a friend and a dish to share at noon. Tim Peterson, who's the executive director of Mount Carmel Bible Camp, he was here last Sunday just to bring a brief greeting. He'll be back to tell more about uh, the ministry of that unique outdoor uh, ministry spot at Mount Carmel. Also on Thursday at 4, a little later in the afternoon, 
the caregiver support group meets. So anyone who is responsible for caring for another is urged to attend that. For more information, you can ask Marcia Schmidt or Pastor Paulus, either one. And then with the Easter season ending today, it means next Sunday is Pentecost. Uh, we always urge you to uh, break out your red clothes for Pentecost in celebration of the coming of the Holy Spirit. But next week is also the start of our summer worship schedule. So first word service will meet just as it always does here in the sanctuary at 8 o'clock. But the two 1010 services then will combine out at Library Square. And in course of rain or bad weather, we come back here to the church, where we hope to be out in uh, God's good creation next Sunday at 1010. There's a bunch of other information in your bulletin. Please uh, read through it all. Make note of what is there. But at this time, I invite you to rise and to greet one another with the peace of Christ as we prepare to sing hymn number 158. Alleluia. Sing to Jesus.
baptized. Shout Hosanna, number 672. Please. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. <clears throat> o Lord, our God, your Son, Jesus, prayed that you would protect his followers from the evil one and sanctify them in the truth of your word. Send your Holy Spirit to strengthen the faith of all your people, that we may cling to Christ in obedient trust and carry the message of your saving love to the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. On the seventh Sunday of Easter, the first reading today is from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, verses 12 through 26. When Jesus ascended into heaven, he told his disciples to wait in Jerusalem until the Holy, until the Holy Spirit came upon them. That occurred on Pentecost Day, which we will celebrate next Sunday. In the meantime, the early church tended to its community life this passage records how a replacement for Judas Iscariot was selected in order to restore the number of apostles to 12. Reading from Acts. Then the disciples returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers. Together, the crowd numbered about 120 persons and said, Friends, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit through David foretold concerning Judas who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus. For he was a numbered 
he was a numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. Now this man acquired a field with the reward of his wickedness, and falling headlong, he burst open in the middle, and all his bowels gushed out. This became known to all the residents of Jerusalem, so that the field was called in their language, Hakeldama, that is, field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, let his homestead become desolate, and let there be no one to live in it. And let another take his position of overseer. So one of the men who had accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us. One of these must become a witness with us to his resurrection. So they proposed two, Joseph called Barsabbas, who was also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed and said, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was added to the eleven apostles. The word of the Lord. The second lesson today concludes our series of readings from 1 Peter with chapter 4, verses 12 to 17, and chapter 5, verses 6 to 11. Peter here urged his readers to accept persecution as a sign of God's judgment on sin, but not as an excuse for revenge or wrongdoing. Rather, they should always remain vigilant against the devil's temptations to abandon faith in Christ and become self-serving. Reading from 1 Peter. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice insofar as you are sharing Christ's suffering, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the Spirit of God, which is the Spirit of because the Spirit of glory, which is the Spirit of God, is resting on you. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, a thief, a criminal, or even as a mischief maker. Yet if any of you suffers as a Christian, do not consider it a disgrace, but glorify God because you bear this name. For the time has come for judgment to begin with the household of God. If it begins with us, what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves, keep alert. Like a, roaring, like a roaring lion, your adversary the devil prowls around, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. I now invite the children to come forward for faith seeds. Testing, testing. Okay, we're going. So, how old are you? Huh? Five. Okay, you're a big girl now. <laughs> One of the things that uh, Jesus is. Well, we gather this place, we gather here to be met by Jesus, who we believe not only died for us, but is, was raised for great, and he comes to us, and he wants to somehow find a way, whether we're big and old like me with gray beards, or we're five years old like you, that he can share his love in a meaningful way. 
Now, my wife, who's sitting over there, she's a, a little shrimp. <laughs> she's kind of like Zacchaeus. You may have learned a song, Zacchaeus was a wee little man, a wee little man was he? You ever heard that song? Anyway, one of the ways Bobby has wanted to help people be met by Jesus is to have these Bible story bags. So sometimes children just pick out a Bible story bag and they find the empty pages and they just scribble on it. But every one of these books has a way of trying to help Jesus speak to you and come to you. And this Zacchaeus is a, a wonderful story, but she painted this picture from one of the books she has in this bag about how Zacchaeus was a little wee little man and he wanted to see Jesus, so he climbed up in a sycamore tree. And when Jesus came by, he saw him up there and he said, come on, now Zacchaeus, a lot of people didn't like him because he, he kind of took their tax money. You don't know what that is at five, but and he cheated at doing it besides. And, but Jesus said to Zacchaeus, who some people didn't like at all, Come on down, Zacchaeus. I'm coming to your house this day. And he couldn't believe it. But he gathered all his friends, a lot of them also tax collectors, nobody liked. And Jesus had a share of them his love, okay? And so uh, we haven't got time to go. But if you went in there, you'd see three couple books about the story of Zacchaeus. And uh, uh, things you can color of the story of Zacchaeus. And you know, when you are already your age, you can hear it, see the story in this book. Uh, and then when you're about second grade, this book is given to three-year-olds. You maybe have one, or if not, you can get one from church. And this one is a, a, a book for kids in second grade, that everybody in second grade, I believe it is, gets one of these, and the story of Zacchaeus is in here too. Also, Jesus can come to you and make you know how much he loves you. Okay? Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we just thank you that your, your love is for all of us, young or old, and that you want us to re remember that every day. We give thanks for your, your love, your forgiveness, your, your wonderful uh, presence in, in our lives. We pray this in your name. Amen. Thanks for coming up. The Holy Gospel today is from John chapter 17. Beginning at verse 1. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. 
I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I'm not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, so that they also may be sanctified in truth. I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me, and I am in you, May they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God, our Heavenly Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Not long after I started in parish ministry, I was asked to say a few words at a 50th wedding anniversary party. The long married couple were dear people whom I came to adore, but at the time, I barely knew them. I mean, it was an honor to be asked to speak, but as I did so, I was acutely aware that literally every other person in the room knew them way better than I did. I felt like I should be there listening, not speaking. Well, it took me a lot longer to learn a similar truth about recognizing graduates, as we're doing here today at Faith. Again, I'd often been honored to address graduates and their parents, and I always tried to make what seemed like appropriate reflections on that important milestone. But it wasn't until our first child was one of those graduates that I really understood what an emotional roller coaster this occasion is, at least for their parents, if not for the students themselves. I still recall dissolving into a puddle of tears as I spoke then about the profound mixture of pride and anxiety, of great grief and greater hope as we send you children in whom we have invested our hearts and lives off into a wide, promising, and too often dangerous world. The urge we feel to hold on to you keep you close and safe and protected is overwhelming and it's also unthinkable. You need to go to blossom, to establish your own adult lives and we need to let go even as we know that we can and never will let go. Not really. Well, I would expect that parents of the graduates we're honoring today are feeling exactly that way. And as I recalled that poignant awareness of what sweet sorrow graduations can be, I suddenly wondered if Jesus didn't feel a whole lot like that as he prayed for his disciples in John 17. This chapter concludes the upper room discourses that Jesus delivered on the night before he died with his long, fervent prayer 
for his disciples and all the believers who would come after them. Many years ago, a Lutheran pastor called this Jesus' high priestly prayer, and the name stuck. As he interceded for his disciples, he was acting as a high priest for the sake of his people. But you know, since we believe that Jesus was God incarnate, I think it's easy for us to downplay or forget that he was also fully human with all of the emotions that brings. And especially that night, as he faced the hard reality of having to depart from his disciples and send them out into the world on their own, I have to think it just ripped him apart. It doesn't appear that he dissolved into a puddle of tears, but it had to have torn at his heartstrings. And so Jesus built a fortress of prayer around those clueless and vulnerable disciples as he implored his heavenly Father to provide them everything they would need after he ascended to heaven. First, he asked God to preserve in them the gift of eternal life. This is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. In other words, Jesus prayed that by faith in him, they would be saved from sin, death, and condemnation, to live with God forever. The next brick in the fortress was giving thanks that the disciples had heard the good news of God's salvation in Christ. <clears throat> the words that you gave to me, I have given to them. And they have received them and know in truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. See, the gathering of the disciples to form the seed of the church was neither by chance nor a foregone conclusion. The Holy Spirit had called and prepared them to hear and believe what Jesus proclaimed. And yet Jesus also knew the power of sin and unbelief to draw people away from him. He would personally experienced it in the crowds that had once followed him, but no longer did. And so the third block in his fortress of prayer was for God to shield them from the endless temptations that infect this good world. I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. For they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. And how would they be safe from the snares of a sinful world? Well, Jesus then pleaded for the Holy Spirit to hold them securely in the truth of God's word. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. For their sakes I sanctify myself so that they also may be sanctified in truth. Now, to be sanctified means to be made holy, to be set apart for God's special use. And so Jesus was asking that his disciples might be kept fit for that holy service. And the last stone in Jesus' fortress of prayer was for unity, a gift that was sorely needed among those fractious disciples who argued about which of them was the greatest, even as Jesus was warning them of his impending suffering and death. I ask that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us. And given how persistent and incorrigible human sin is, it was only by God's gift of grace that they could remain united with one another. 
Well, with these five powerful and heartfelt petitions, Jesus placed his disciples safely inside a fortress of prayer. And yet his concern extended far beyond the little group gathered there in the upper room. In verse 20, he specifically prayed, I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of all those who will believe in me through their word. And Jesus was going to the cross to bear the sin of the whole world, and so he prayed for all Christians everywhere, down through the ages. And that means that he also prayed for you and for me. For amidst the raw human emotions of that night, Jesus was also the Son of God. He did have divine knowledge and perspective that saw far beyond his beloved followers in the upper room to the generations of beloved believers whom the Holy Spirit would create for centuries to come until the war against evil is finally complete. And so the fortress of prayer that Jesus built that night long ago also surrounds you and me. And especially for the graduates we honor today and their parents, but for every one of you, in whatever hard and wonderful changes you may face, Jesus builds around you the same fervent prayers that he did then. Now within the Godhead, rather than from the upper room, he asks the Holy Spirit to preserve in you the gift of eternal life. He rejoices that you have heard God's saving word that brings forgiveness of sin and true freedom. He pleads for God to protect you from all the spiritual dangers that afflict this broken world. He continually speaks the truth to you through his word in order to sanctify and equip you to live for him. And he calls you into the divine unity of the church, the body of Christ, which, as Martin Luther wrote in the small catechism, the Holy Spirit preserves in unity with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. In his high priestly prayer, we hear Jesus pour out his heart as in no place else. It reveals the depth of his love, his worry, his foresight, and his perpetual concern for you and me and for all of his followers. For us, as much as for those first disciples, he constructed this fortress of prayer. So take refuge in it. Hunker down safely within it. Never venture away from it. Know and trust and cling for dear life to Christ Jesus, your Lord and Savior, so that his love for you might always hold you in faith and equip you to live for him in everything you do. In the name of Jesus. Amen.
Please rise as you're able as we confess our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. As we worship God now, using our tithes and gifts and offerings, and our thanks to Ringers of Faith and Faith Singers uh, for presenting the last of their musical gifts for this program.
In the prayers of the church, there is one addition to what is printed on the blue prayer insert. Uh, we pray for Randy Johnson, who is uh, receiving rehabilitative care in Glencoe. Let us bow our heads and hearts together in prayer. O oh Lord, our gracious God, how lovingly Jesus built a solid fortress of prayer around all of his disciples in every place and time. Send your Holy Spirit, Lord, to keep us always within those gracious walls so that we may be held securely in faith and be equipped to serve you in every aspect of our lives. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, we rejoice with the young people in our family of faith who are graduating from high school and with others who are finishing degrees. Thank you for preserving them, giving them skill and learning, and leading them to this point of growing independence. Assure them and their families that as they begin ventures of which they cannot see the ending, by paths not yet walked through perils unknown, that your hand leads them and your love supports them. Give your holy angels charge of them that the wicked one may have no power over them. Lord, in your mercy. God of compassion and mercy, bless Sue Graff, Wes Lorenz, and Alan Sharn as they all recover from surgery this week. Restore Randy Johnson to strength and wholeness. And hold Sam Schumann and his family in your loving arms as he waits in the hospital. Comfort all whose hearts are heavy with grief or who are in any distress with your gracious care. We pray for everyone on our prayer list and others for whom we pray now in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. God of love is another year of Sunday school, confirmation, digging deeper, faith groups, and music ministries all come to an end. We thank you for working through them all to plant your saving word in many hearts. Grant that your promise may continue to grow, flourish, and produce rich fruit for your kingdom in the lives of all your people. Lord, in your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for placing our church within the Augustana district of LCMC. We pray today for our sister churches, Hosanna Lutheran in Watertown, South Dakota, and Kensington Lutheran in Kensington, Minnesota. Bless their ministries and use them to further your gracious kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. All of these things, O oh Lord, the prayers that flow out of our hearts and those greater gifts that only you know that we need. We ask all in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Closing hymn is number 369, The Church's One Foundation.
Go in peace. Serve the Lord.